It's time for Thriller Thursdays here on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. The Hawk Chronicles follow the adventures of Detective Kate Hawk, who went from a Baltimore police detective to intergalactic investigator, from fighting crime on the streets to crime in the stars. In the last episode of The Hawk Chronicles. This isn't my eye, it's solid. But I can see out of it. Hundreds of times better than before. What happened to my real eye? You don't remember? Remember what? Detective, you were shot in the head. You really don't remember anything? No. Where am I? We are in a parallel universe. What's the latest on Detective Barnes? As far as I know, Captain, he's doing as well as can be expected. Detective Barnes is near retirement age, and given the severity of his injury, he's going to be retired. Kate. Angela. I didn't expect to see you here. Do you have any leads yet? We were wondering if you had any insight as to what he was working on. Look, I'll send you over everything we have on this case. I'm sure that's what he was following up on. Yes, Kate? Pierman, I just talked to Detective Garcia from Baltimore County. It appears that Jim was headed out to your location. What is it about the case that he can't let go of? He must have been convinced that there was more to it than an elaborate prank. But the fact that he was shot while coming here to see the stip can mean only one thing. We've got another player on the loose. And now, episode 22, The Player. Kate, if there is someone else out there involved with Von Longer and Parks, I have no clue as to their identity. Is there no one on your side missing or known to be here? Missing persons on our side are as common as they are on your side. We will have to work on narrowing down the list. I'll work on any known associates of Parks. It's going to be a little tricky, though. You'll be back to conducting two investigations like you did with Barnes. Do you have a good relationship with the detectives on the case? Garcia and I went through the academy together. I'll work mostly with her. All right. I'll let you know if I find anything on this end. And Kate, if whoever did this was after your partner for investigating the stip, they'll be after you too, so keep your head down. I plan to. Thanks. Detective. Mac, what have you got? We had the current cadet class out there sweeping for the bullet. They found a 7.62 millimeter with a metal detector. 7.62? Isn't that a military round? It's referred to as the NATO round. The 7.62 was developed in the 1950s for the M14 rifle and M60 machine guns. It's now used in the M16 rifle and its NATO counterparts. So we're looking for military weapons? Not necessarily. The 7.62 is interchangeable with other weapons, like the Winchester 308. So our list of potential weapons is still huge. It's on an international scale. The lab will have the bullet soon. I'll let you know as soon as I hear anything else. I'm sure Garcia will keep you in the loop. Thanks, Mac. Detective Hawk. Nelson. Agent Hawk, I want to congratulate you on your first mission. Outstanding work. Thanks. Not too bad uh, for a rookie. Ooh, turning the tables, are we? Fair play, Hawk. Fair play. What do you know about this case? Nothing more than you, unfortunately. I was on the station at Central when it went down. I know pretty much what you know. So, Officer Nelson... I understand that you'll be able to liaison for me with Garcia and Drew. Uh, yeah, Captain McCall has coordinated with Captain Pike for all our sections to work together on this one. I'll make sure you know everything they find. Thanks. I think your first task is to line up a time we can go back to Florina's store and see if she can provide any more info on Parks' associates. I'll get right on it. Thanks. After lunch, Nelson informed me that Detective Garcia would be available to accompany me out to Florina's store. Once again, I was playing the dual investigation role. On one hand, I'm investigating the shooting of my partner by an unknown assailant, and on the other, I'm investigating a criminal from an alternate dimension. It meant that I really needed to think before I opened my mouth. (laughs) I have to admit, though, I was getting pretty good at it. I met Garcia, and we soon arrived back in Little Italy, and to the store where it all began. So, as I understand it, you think that there is a connection between the monument prank you and Jim investigated and his shooting. Jim was shot on his way to Martin State Airport. That's where the dead case and oversized evidence is stored. And you think it had something to do with his shooting? Jim was never satisfied that we found everything we could on the monument. 
Whatever it was that he was searching for was important enough for the perp of the hoax, a Jeremy Parks, to flee the country. So, this Parks admitted that he set the whole thing up, and when you put the screws to him, he fled the country. To Sweden, according to a flight number we found imprinted on a notepad in Florina's office. Everything we found in Parks' apartment pointed to a global-scale operation involving monuments and famous landmarks. That's why we lost everything to Homeland Security. I can justify questioning Miss Florina now, because she might have information on an unrelated ongoing investigation. And now you're convinced that this Parks guy had something to do with Jim's shooting. Do you have any other leads, Angela? At this point, Miss Florina is as good as anything I can come up with. You go ahead and take the lead on this one. Detective Hawk, you're back again? Oh, do you have a new partner? Ms. Florina, this is Detective Garcia. I'm assisting her with the investigation of a shooting. Unfortunately, the victim was my partner, Detective Barnes. Oh no, that's terrible. What happened? Is he okay? He's recovering at the Mayo Clinic after serious brain trauma. He was apparently shot from long range by a sniper. Oh, I'm so sorry. He was such a nice man. Ma'am, I'm really new to the case. Could you tell me how you came to know your former employee, Jeremy Parks? Jeremy? What on earth does he have to do with a shooting? We found extensive evidence at Jeremy's apartment that indicated he was involved in an international plot to destroy several monuments and landmarks. Destroy? What on earth for? We're still trying to assess that. We do know that after we questioned him, he fled on the first flight to Sweden. Any idea why he would go to Sweden? Does he have any family there? No. Not that I know of. How well did you really know him? It's like I told Detective Hawk here. Jeremy came to me looking for work. When I told him how badly the business was doing, he said he didn't really need the money. How so? He was financially well off. He didn't need money. He said he just wanted the experience of common life. So we worked out a barter system. He basically worked for food. You never really mentioned where he came from, or how he came to be wealthy. He would only say that he came from Colorado where he did well in the silver mining business. But you don't know of any connection he might have had with Sweden. I have no idea why he would go to Sweden. No idea at all. Did Jeremy ever have any people in the store that specifically asked for him or people he might have associated with outside the store? No. Listen, detectives. I've told you everything I know. Jeremy was a loner. He worked well, we had a good arrangement, and I didn't ask a lot of questions. Listen, I've already told all this to your Homeland Security guys. Why do I have to keep going over all of it? Homeland Security is investigating the possibility of Parks being involved in a terrorist threat. Which is absolutely crazy. And we're investigating the possibility that he was involved somehow in my partner being shot. Well, maybe your two agencies could work together and leave us law-abiding citizens alone. It's two separate incidences with separate sets of questions, Miss Florina. We do appreciate your cooperation in this matter. Do you have anything else? I'm good for now. Thank you, Miss Florina. If you think of anything else, call either one of us. I certainly will. Good day, detectives. She seemed pretty vague to me. I get that every time I talk to her. Last time I asked her about where his money came from, she said she had no idea. And now she's saying a Colorado silver mine. This whole thing is a long shot, at best. Parks is the only connection I have to the monument, which is what I think Jim was investigating that day. We ask questions, and he flees to Sweden. Given what you and Jim found at his apartment, and the fact that he took the first flight to Sweden, I don't think it's too much of a stretch to involve him in the shooting. When we get back, I'm going to run some financials and family history on the store owner. I think she's holding back on us. (laughs) Don't tell me you're going by your gut, too. Hey, we were academy classmates. We both scored in the top of our class, using that gut instinct. Hey, rookie. Not you two. Oh, yeah. I wore the moniker long enough. It's a pleasure to pass it along to you. So what can I do for you there, Officer Brooklyn? Very funny. Have you heard anything new about Detective Barnes? The last update I had was he was still in an induced coma. Following the brain surgery, he's still listed as critical, but he's stable. So why did they have to transport him to the Mayo Clinic? That had to be a considerable risk, given his condition. I think it got down to a life or death matter. The doctors felt that his only chance for recovery was the Mayo, uh, since he's rated number one in neurotrauma. Yeah, but Hopkins is at least in the top five. If you ask me, 
I think somebody pulled some strings in order to get that approved. My money's on Hawk. When she wants something, there's nothing stopping her. I mean, Jim didn't have family, and she was like a daughter to him. Hey, you might be right. She's pretty gung-ho. As you found out well enough in the gym. Ha, ha, very funny. I'm rolling on the floor laughing. Speaking of gung-ho. And what are you two doing at my desk? Comparing notes. On you. On what? Don't listen to him, detective. He's incorrigible. I was trying to find out if there was any update on Detective Barnes. I only know what everybody else knows. He's in an induced coma. The brain surgery was done, but we won't know the full results until he comes out of it. He lost the eye, but they'll fit him with a prosthetic when and if he recovers. You know, he will recover. And when he does, we're all going to go to McWiggins for a pint. Well, as much as I hate to tear myself away from such good company, I need to check back with Garcia and Drew. Yeah, I got a few things to get done before the end of the day, though. Let us know if you hear anything. Will do. Detective Hawk. Hey, Angela. We just got back ballistics on that round. What do you have? They confirmed that it was a 7.62. The markings haven't yet been matched to any weapon in the system, but there's a big problem. What problem? Kate, they did a special analysis to determine the possible maker of the round. And? It's composed of an alloy. Well, an alloy that doesn't exist. Does this strange alloy mean that Kate is dealing with another portal traveler? Why would they silence her partner? What secrets are being covered? Who is behind the shooting? Find out more in the next episode of the Hawk Chronicles, The Sniper. In this time of COVID-19, CDC asks you keep your hands clean. Don't congregate and kindly shelter in place. Also wash your hands and don't touch your face. So use soap and water and grab a clean towel. And don't be a Jonah. Prevent spread of Corona by washing your hands. Olay! This was a public service announcement from the Mutual Audio Network.